The next experiment is study of hysteresis loop for a ferromagnetic sample. The objective of this experiment is to study the phenomena of magnetic hysteresis and calculate the retentivity, coercivity and saturation magnetization of a material using a hysteresis loop tracer. Now what is ferromagnetism? As we have already studied in the experiment Queen's tube method that the value of chi that is the magnetic susceptibility when it is uh, many many greater than 1 and the value should be positive when a material shows this that is the chi is many many greater than 1 that is it, it has a large value and the value is positive then the material shows ferromagnetism for example the well known ferromagnetic material are iron, cobalt, nickel, steel, etc. Now what are the origins of ferromagnetism? So we have already studied the origin of diamagnetism and paramagnetism and we are going to study the origin of ferromagnetism in this experiment. So as we have already studied that the origin of diamagnetism lies in the orbit, um, orbital change or the change in the orbital motion of an atomic electrons right due to the applied magnetic field and the origin of the paramagnetisms lies in the, in the existence of the permanent magnetic dipole moments in a substance. And to study the origin of ferromagnetism, a theory was established in, uh, by Weiss. The theory is called theory of molecular field. So he has made he had made the uh, some assumptions. Firstly. In a ferromagnetic material, there are some domains, there are some macroscopic domains which are, spont which are spontaneously magnetized. So even in the absence of a magnetic field, the domains still are magnetized and the magnetization of the whole material is due to the resultant of the magnetic movements of these microscopic domains. And secondly, second assumption is some molecular field exists within the material and this, uh, this spontaneous uh, magnetization is due to that existence, existence of the molecular fields. So in, in a single domain, the magnetic dipoles are aligned parallel to one another. It may so happen that the neighbor domain, they are not parallel with the previous domain. They may be not, they are, they may be not parallel, but within a single domain, the alignment is parallel that alignment of the di magnetic dipoles are parallel to one another. So you can see the different orientations of two neighboring magnetized domains in a ferromagnetic material in the picture. So between uh, two neighboring domains, there is a small region which is marked as block wall in this picture. So this walls is a transition region where the alignment is different from the pre, from one uh, from the one domain to the other. So as per the wise uh, assumption, the total magnetic field acting on the magnetic dipoles within the ferromagnetic material is H plus gamma M. So H is the external field. 
and m is the magnetization and gamma is uh, a constant the constant is known as the wise constant or molecular field constant so we can see that the field is getting modified and and the resultant field is the external field plus some magnetization which is which is which has arisen because of the spontaneous magnetization so the resultant resultant field resultant magnetic field hm is h plus gamma m now in general what is hysteresis so when there are two physical quantities one is m and another is n and there are cyclic variations of n which cause the cyclic variations of m so it is dependent but if the changes of m lags behind those of n in this case we can say that there is a hysteresis in the relation of m to n so it will be clear when you study the magnetic hysteresis and the hysteresis loop so we have already studied the hysteresis loop for the ferroelectric material in the previous experiment now for magnetic hysteresis loop we will study so in this picture we can see that there is variations of m that is magnetization with the external field h now we start from h is equal to 0 that is o in this picture now we now we are increasing the value of h and as it is increased the variation of m is rapid so it will go fast and it will be saturated here oa is the path when you increase from uh, 0 to a value till it get saturated now we are decreasing the value of h but we can see there is a lag it will not follow the path ao while returning from the maximum value of h to the to, towards the zero so it will follow a different path and in this picture you can see that this path is ab so it is clear that when the value is reduced to zero the value of h that is the magnetic field is reduced to zero still it has some magnetization it has some finite value the magnetization has some finite value so as for the magnetic induction b so there is a remanent magnetization now we are making the opposite field and at a, at a certain value of minus h now the magnetization has become zero that is it got demagnetized and it will follow the path b c d while the field is opposite again in this cycle it will be saturated and finally if we increase the value of h from minus value from the negative value it will follow d f sorry d e f a and a loop a b c d 
EFA will be a closed curve and this is called a hysteresis cycle and here it is MH loop this MH loop is called hysteresis loop if you study the variation of capital H the magnetic field with the magnetic induction B this loop will be similar type now in this picture a loop is shown a hysteresis loop is shown for this practical setup now coercivity what is coercivity coercivity is a measure of ability of ferromagnetic material to withstand an external magnetic field without becoming demagnetized so in the loop we can see that when the value of h is zero is reduced to zero still it it has some magnetization that is it is not a it is not completely magnetized and after when we reduce further to the negative magnetic field then there is a point at which the magnetic uh, the magnetization is is zero magnetization is becomes zero so so if a material sustains is magnetization to to a further value of negative age the coercivity of this material will be greater and it will be called the value if the values if this value of coercivity is high then it is called magnetic, uh, magnetically hard material and if the value is small it is called soft mag soft material magnetic soft material whereas retentivity is the measure of the magnetic induction or residual magnetization when the applied field is reduced to zero from the saturation so in this picture ex will determine the value of coercivity this loop with ex loop with will determine the coercivity and eyr will determine the retentivity and from tip to tip value in ey that is eys s for saturation it will it will be given the value of magnetic saturation here is the block diagram of hysteresis loop tracer here in this laboratory so you can see there is a solenoid and inside the solenoid there is a pickup coil and in the pickup coil there is a space for the sample the rod type sample are there that will be placed in the pickup coil and will will be measure the retentivity coercivity and magnetic saturation for that magnetic material which is placed in the pickup coil an ac current is supplied in the solenoid and uh, the signal e1 and e2 it is mentioned in this diagram an integrator and phase shifter is there and a differentiator is also there to determine the value of d2j dt2 and the signals will be collected in the y and x amplifier and finally it will give the value of j and h now how we'll get the value of j and h we should have a rough idea the magnetic field is varying because the solenoid is connected with the ac source the sample is cylindrical and it is coaxial with the pickup coil so that variation in the magnetic field is 
the pickup coil pick that variation and in the pickup coil a uniform field which is produced is represented as h a the field the resultant field which is acting in the sample that will be h a minus n m so here n is the demagnetization factor and m is the magnetization now here we define j as magnetic polarization which is nothing but mu 0 m so in terms of h and j we can write the magnetic induction as mu 0 h plus j so earlier we have seen that b is equal to uh, mu 0 h plus mu 0 m that is mu 0 h plus m and the signal which corresponds to the applied field h a it is it is termed as e1 and it is basically c1 into h a where c1 is a constant now the sample cannot occupy fully the uh, with the pickup coil so there is a gap between the sample and the pickup coil so ac is the area of the pickup coil and as is the area of the sample so total flux linked with the pickup coil would be this flux linked with the sample and the space between the samples and the pickup coil thus the uh, flux phi is mu 0 ac minus as h prime plus as b now h prime is the magnetic field in the in that free area but the variation would be very small if we choose the length of the sample more than 10 times the diameter of the pickup coil so this can be this uh, uh, difference of h and h prime can be negligible so uh, basically we can write h in in place of h prime so finally phi has become mu 0 ac h plus asj now the signal which is induced in the pickup coil will be proportional to d phi dt and after integrating the signal we get e3 so e3 is basically c3 phi phi is the link uh, phi is the linked flux now if we solve these equations we will find the equation for j corresponding to equation number 6 and uh, the equation for h which corresponds to equation number 7 so a circuit may be designed in such a way that the value of j and h we can get and the hysteresis loop can be gained so the main aim is to produce the signals that electric signals which corresponds to j and h and using these signals with the help of oscilloscope we can generate the hysteresis loop now suppose the solenoid has a n a number of turns so e2 the signal e2 will be n d phi dt right and e2 will be n mu 0 ac dh dt plus n as dj dt now if we use phi as uh, mu 0 ac h plus as j then we are getting the e2 as as the as mentioned in the equation number 10 and integrating these signals we can get e3 
as minus e3 is equal to minus z1 integrate integration e2 dt so g1 is the gain of the integrated and phase shifted and combining this the sum of e1 and e minus e3 it will give the signal ey so ey will be basically gy my uh, sorry minus gy c1 h minus g1 n mu 0 ac h plus c1 n j by mu 0 minus g1 n a s j using the previous equations so now we'll adjust the value of c1 such that c1 becomes g1 n mu 0 ac then the uh, then ey will be reduced to the equation as mentioned in the equation number 13 that is gy g1 n ac multiplied by as by ac minus n into j so gy is basically the gain and we'll get some fractions of e1 and uh, the fractions of minus e3 that fractions are alpha and beta that is al alpha fractions of e1 and beta fractions of minus e3 will add up and will get input for the amplifier of the x input so we'll will be getting ex as gx g1 n mu 0 ac minus b h plus gx g1 n ac n minus b as by ac and j very complicated one right so we'll substitute uh, c1 and we'll adjust the value of alpha and beta because we'll, we'll design in a such a way that alpha becomes as by uh, ac that is the that is called the area ratio and beta is equal to n that is demandation factor and finally we'll get ex as gx g1 n mu 0 ac as by ac minus n into h so we have ey the signals for the y channel and ex the signals for the x channel of the CRO and finally using the XY mode we will get the hysteresis loop so hysteresis loop is directly traced by the CRO that is why it is called hysteresis loop tracer so with uh, with the values EX and EY the variations of H J we can find as uh, h is equal to g g0 ex by a s over ac minus n and j in terms of ey we can say j is equal to mu0 gx ey by gy sorry the value of j is mu0 gx ey over gy into a s by a c minus n now 1 over g 0 is g x g 1 n mu 0 a c now when there is no sample in the pickup coil still we are, still we are applying the magnetic field in, the, in that case j will be 0 alpha will be 1 and n will be 0 so h will be h a the applied one so in that case e y would be 0 we can put that values in e y it will be 0 and e x will be 0 inverse h a so we can we can calibrate the value of ex and ha and that slope will give the value of g0 inverse so using this we can get the value of g0 and we'll use that value in calculation here in this experiment 
the value of G0 will be supplied directly. Finally, with the value of uh, G0 and the signals EX, EY, we can calculate H, the coercivity, the saturation magnetization, and the retentivity. As you can see in this picture, here is a panel diagram of the hysteresis loop tracer. So, the from the left, the phase can be adjusted, the edge value, edge balance can be adjusted, and the area, the area ratio and demagnetization factor we can adjust from these knobs. There is a display to measure the magnetic field, so it will uh, give the RMS value. We can change the magnetic field and it is not a constant, it will, it will give some discrete values of magnetic field. It is not the continuous one. The solenoid is connected with a knob and uh, CRO XY is uh, written. Here the CROs are connected. A DC balance knob is there. And finally, the input for the pickup coil is there. In the right, you can see the solenoid and in within the solenoid that this pickup coil is placed and in the pickup coil there is a place to hold the sample now the area ratio it is dependent on the area of the sample and the pickup coil but we can adjust the value of area ratio to enhance the signals in X, X, X in the X direction. So when the values, when the signals will be very low, it will not be measurable. So we will adjust the uh, value of area ratio and it will be proportional to the X directions of the signals. Now suppose the area ratio, the measured area ratio is x okay x means the uh, unknown value x and we are adjusting the area ratio as 3.5 x okay so in the CRO if we measure the value of the x signals as y then the actual value will be y by 3.5 as we have adjust, adjusted the area ratio 3.5 times so every measured value will be divided by the this multiplication factor okay i hope the experimental setup is understood thank you